<laughs> Hi, this is Shannon. Welcome to Matte Satin and Shimmer Inside the World of Beauty. And I'm here with Kim. Hello. Hey, how are you? to be here. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I am. Awesome. So today we're going to talk with Kim um, and have a little beauty chat about sort of trends and her kit and where she works and how she's got there and what um, life is looking like now in the salon. Yes. So, very excited. So let's start with um, what got you into doing hair because you're a hairstylist. Yes. So doing hair, I absolutely have always loved it. I was probably first introduced to it whenever I was in college where I wanted to constantly be in it. Doing people's hair, oh, yeah. uh, fashion is always something that I love and I think that it goes hand in hand. So you always have to do a little bit of both. Yeah. What your What your style is ultimately is what your hairstyle should be. What you work, how your activities, you know, things mm -hmm. outside of um, even just your work. You have to have your hair fit every day, you know, your everyday life, so. Wow, that's very true. I yeah. love that. That's a great perspective. <laughs> very cool. All right, so you are currently at Salon 122 here in Marysville. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about your progression from where you started and what led you uh, to where you are now. Um, I think my big thing is um, putting the work in. You know, a lot of times mm -hmm. hair, being a hairstylist, um, being behind the chair is important because you learn so much more about your clientele and their life, and you become part of their life as well. So it's really nice to be behind the chair and learn um, more about your clients. And it's a personal touch. Yeah. You know, you're in somebody's personal space, and when you're doing that, you feel what they're feeling. So you need to live in that moment. That is so true. I think we are, you know, some of the few people who get to hear people's life stories. And I think it's because we're touching them, mm -hmm. you know. And so that sort of creates this bond between us where they will maybe talk to us about things that you might not talk to other people about, right? So right. that's really special. A little counseling, you know, the free counseling that you give. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> the stories we hear. Yes, for sure. yes. And especially you. I haven't been behind the chair for 10 years or so, but mm -hmm. so, yeah. I'm really yeah, behind the chair is important. I mean, it definitely, it, it keeps our, um, even the stylist, it keeps everybody going which I think that um, there's a lot of different ideas and perspectives that you can do as you're doing hair, mm -hmm. you know, becoming an owner and, you know, traveling like you do outside of the salon. Um, but being in a salon and being in that atmosphere is, is very important as well. So It is. You're right. Very cool. So did you work... What was the first salon you worked in? I was trying to think. I was, I was at Jacob Neal Downtown yeah. Salon. We did that. Um, I was there for about a year, more of an apprenticeship. Yeah. Um, but it was it was very Chicago, New York y feel. Um, they do Channel 4. Um, the news. The yeah, news. The broadcasters. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they do all the news broadcasters and things. But that, you know, I loved it there, uh, but came back to the small town because I felt a connection with um, my clientele here. And knew that I wanted to build um, within my own personal um, life as well. So um, this is where I chose, and I, I'm very grateful to have the clientele that I do. Awesome. Wow. Yeah, you've come a really long way. I mean, for me personally, you're an inspiration because you're really good at building your clientele and keeping them and sort of making them feel important. And, like, you know, I've just noticed every time I come in, as I come in now and get my hair cut by you, and colored, which I need terribly now, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're always fun, and you're always just full of energy. And I know that you've been through a lot, but you don't really let that pull you down. So I just think that's really awesome. Really Thank good you. inspiration. Thank you. So I think that, um, you know, every, you have to love what you do. You mm -hmm. know, and when you are enjoying your everyday life with work, and you actually can make a living doing it, it does show, you yeah. know. And so... Um, putting putting yourself in anybody else's shoes, I think that that is always 
um, important, especially when you're not just doing hair or the makeup or, you know, it's making somebody feel good, yeah. you know, and that in return makes you feel good. Yeah, that's so awesome. It does. Yeah. When you work with a really awesome group of girls, yeah, you know, like they're fun. everybody just sort of feels like a family in there. You guys are very comfortable with each other and, you know, it's just awesome. Love to see that because you don't always feel that. Or for me personally, I do not, and going into like a salon setting. So, right. love that. It's yeah. really good stuff. All right. So, what do you like most about what you do now? Like, what is something I, that maybe moves Well, you? I mean, I, you know, I love doing weddings and yes. I, I love doing that, but um, I've always been a color girl. Like, yeah. love to do the color, love the, you know, violet or the ombres and things that are going on right now, balayages. And mm-hmm. I, I think that just the new trends consistently um, staying on top of what is new, I love being motivated to maybe be the first to do something you know so I I try to constantly look at um heck Pinterest is great right now and in the social media of of learning new trends and things that are wonderful um obviously celebrities are like the first to obviously do multiple things so I I enjoy looking at that kind of thing it's Mm -hmm. the same thing with fashion you know you gotta stay fashion forward with hair with makeup and and everything so right on okay so then that brings me to the point of um who inspires you is there a celebrity that you think of that maybe you kind of is your go-to person to see like what are they up to like what's their hair looking like these days (laughs) and all that well it it really is what my clientele brings me to okay so it, it it does have an effect on let's say right now the Kardashians are all mm-hmm. over the place, so that's huge. You go back to the Jennifer Aniston. Everybody yes. wants Jennifer Aniston's hair. They've She's always just wanted that. Naturally gorgeous, right? Right. Yeah. right. So you you do go with what's probably in right now. Mm-hmm. I I definitely do that. I wouldn't say um, there's people that you guys wouldn't even know, like Beth Moore, who she definitely you know is more on the spiritual. Mind. It's just so many different things that influential throughout different um, cultures you know I think that yes. there's somebody for each of each one of us mm-hmm. um, our hair in general is not the same as somebody else's so you bring these pictures in and it's just like okay well mm, she's got you know coarse and thick hair and you have baby fine hair so we need to find something that works for you right. what's work works for your face shape what works for you know your personality you may love something but we definitely can find something that works for what your what your look is gonna what's gonna look best on you. Awesome. And that's what I, I like that. to do. Yeah. Because that that is I think the hardest thing. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I just want to look like this. Well, you know what? You can, you know. But we have to whatever you have, you we have to work with that. Yeah. So. Get the shape and all that. Yes. Yeah, that absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I like Beth Morris. Like she has some great volume. You know yeah. what I mean? And, I've loved the ombres on the Kardashians, and I hope that the ombre stays around. That's been one of my favorite colors of all time. Yeah. Like, it, you can make it last, mm-hmm. but what I like most about it is it's just flattering. Like you, can, I you love know. the dimension of it. You know, yeah. you, you do the wave like you have. I have it straight today, but I have a little bit of the ombre on the bottom, and it, oh, it yeah. just brings it out. As soon as you have that, that beachy wave, we're going into spring, you know, you everybody wants that natural look. Yeah. So um, getting a little sea salt spray and really kind of texturizing your hair and letting the air blow through it, you can have that natural look. And then having that ombre get in there, it's, a, it's that dimensional color that really brings out just a fun look. So Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So before we talk about your kit, um, what are the trends that you're seeing now? Like here we're talking about ombre. Do you see that sort of evolving? And what is your forecast for sort of hair trends that may be coming right up? Right now, um, the super straight is out. Volume is back in. And actually cutting it up to about chin to shoulder is a real, that medium cut. Um, right now mine's long. But yeah. taking that up and really giving like a nice texture to your hair so then you can do that wave. I'm sure you see that on Pinterest a lot where you okay. have the depth of dark. When I say depth, it's a little deeper in. And then you highlight over top of that with a multiple tone if it's two or three colors. Normally, you always want at least three colors into your hair. It gives your hair a shine and a glow that a lot of people don't have if they just do an 
all over natural color. Anybody can throw a color over top of their head, but it's not going to give you the, the shine and the wow factor. Right so yes, I do think that that's coming up. That'll definitely happen. Spring's coming. Everyone's going to want a little bit more blonde. Yeah. You always should have a little accent up around your face. Um, it'll give you a little bit more glow. So, Right on. I agree. I agree. I always like a blonder around my face. That's my signature. You know I've always <laughs> <No>. done that. <laughs> and here I am a brunette. But you know what? I love my blonde. So yeah, right? I, Even I, just I, a little lighter. That's right. That's, that's right. Crazy. That's right. All right. Very cool. So, cuts shorter. Oh, man. That, that makes me nervous. Yeah. I'm kind of loving my long hair. Everyone but... likes their long hair, but I'm telling <laughs> you, everyone's going up to that shoulder length, you know? Yeah. So, this is Kelly, Kelly Rippa, right now, yeah. she's been a huge trend, you know, huge trendsetter with her hair. So, that's yeah. another one. Yeah. You know, she kind of started, started that. Textures it. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, she wears it all kinds of different ways, right? Yeah. Like, she'll go super straight, but then she'll do, like, this sort of accidental beauty which is my thing you know just yes. sort of almost curl but not really just great texture yeah people really love cute. that people yeah. love that right on <laughs> all right so um yeah let's talk about your kit all right what are some i favorites? am a moroccan girl love the moroccan oil love the things like that um i actually brought a few things you all need for spring to come no matter what length your hair is is your inch iron. I use a Marcel, but you don't have to use a Marcel. Hot Tools is the brand that I like. Um, this is a Marcel inch iron. And all lengths can use this from short to long. I always suggest that you start at the shaft, okay? You want to do a root to end and you curl and you always want to do away from your face so it's not coming towards your face. It'll open your face up, give you that natural that natural look for a curl. So what is it about a hot tool iron that you love? Because that's one of my mm -hmm. favorites also. It heats up and it stays. It heats up fast. Um, the, the longevity of it. I've had those forever. So yeah. that's one of the things that is great about um, a hot tool is it'll last you forever. Awesome. Um, my go-to hairspray. Girl, Kendra I knew I 25. <laughs> Kendra 25. Yes. It is the volume spray. It has been the number one hairspray for years. Mm -hmm. um, they don't change it, and that's why it stays good. Everyone tries to make it bigger, greater, better, whatever. Um, it's only pink right now because of breast cancer awareness, which is great. They give a lot of their proceeds to them. Um, but it's just a good hairspray. You can still have movement. It still holds if you really like a nice, strong, strong spray. But this also is something good for short, long, medium. It doesn't matter the length of your hair. And it smells good. I mean... It smells amazing. Right? Like, you pretty much can smell... People are all the time like, oh, it's that small. Yes. I'm like, it's my hairspray. I smell my hair. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, you don't want to smell like some... like. But it's not too hairspray. strong, so don't think true. it's too strong either. Kenra has a nice balance of that. Um, I also recommend a blow-dry spray. A blow-dry spray is a protectant, so it will, first of all, help dry your hair about 10 to 20% quicker, which then you don't have to use as much heat onto your hair. Everybody's using curling irons, flat irons, everything. You need to protect your hair so then it stays nice. Nice okay, and shiny. so I know that they have a serum as well. That's a blow dry serum. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is the difference? Why would someone use a spray versus a serum? A serum's going to weigh your hair down. Yeah. Um, possibly, you know, yes, if you have coarse hair and you need that extra hold or I would say um, heaviness to your hair, so then it holds down and doesn't fuzz out. I would use a serum. Now this is a spray for multi-tonal, you know. No, any type of hair. So if you're having the, the um, fine hair, thin hair, thick hair, it doesn't matter. This is a universal spray that will help protect anyone. And this smells like cotton candy. Mm, it's amazing. Yum. Okay, it is I have amazing. not tried that. <laughs> and it's easy, right? Like yes. it's super spray fast. Spray it on and wet just, kind of... and you just mist it over your hair. Awesome. My kind of girl, Kenra and Hot Tools. Yep. Yeah. All right. So what we are <laughs> thinking about and talking about is... The curling iron. So if you want those locks that stay, if you want hair like what Shannon has today, you have to do a thermal setting mist. The thermal setting mist, it sprays on dry 
and you miss that on and then you hit it with a curling iron. The curling iron will then, therefore, it'll take that thermal setting mist and set that curl in so then it lasts throughout the whole entire day, Yeah, which is great. And mine even less, like I, you know, I've talked about several times, um, I'll go four days. And this is actually third, fourth day mm -hmm. of my curls. So, I and mean, I have the natural up, curl anyway. But. It'll touch up just fine. And mm -hmm. if you cannot use um, a hairspray as a thermal setting mist because it will only make your hair crusty. Yeah. You still want it to look like it's clean and moving and not so hard. Like Shannon's hair doesn't look like that. It still looks soft. It still looks movable. And that's because, again, she's using the right products. Absolutely. It doesn't get flaky or anything. No, no. Um, I mentioned the Moroccan oil. I actually don't have any today with me, but the Moroccan oil is... Um, a really nice product that helps rejuvenate your hair. You can put that in your hair wet um, with your shampoo or your conditioner. Some people need to do that because it's too heavy maybe whenever you're getting out. Now a lot of times I like to put it on mid shaft to ends and I'll put, rub some in my hands and then I actually take my hair back and I do it all the way to my ends and I soak that um, oil into my hair and then I will dry and proceed with all the other um, products if I ever need anything else. So Yeah, I think so that Moroccan like, oil is good for like um, humidity, resistance. Yes, um, absolutely. It's just sort of like a band-aid for the hair, I like to say, right? Perfect. Just to sort of like smooth your ends. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that's better. exactly right. Awesome. All right. Well, that's what I have in my kit today. Um, really just to get you spring forward. Hopefully that, that'll help. Um, give you some ideas for the upcoming season and hopefully we get some sunshine soon. <laughs> Yay, that's what I'm hoping for. I know. For sure. It's Ohio weather. <laughs> All right. So anything big or different coming up in your future? Like what's your summer going to look, look like and mm -hmm. is there anything going on? Um, well, we, we definitely have prom season coming up, we wedding season's coming up for you. Absolutely. Um, so we do have some weddings already booked and of course prom's already been booked, but, um, we, um, I would say, yeah, mostly doing, getting into the updos and things like that. In April, there is a hair show in Tennessee Ooh, and, fun. um, a couple of us are going to that and, um, the, anytime you get education, it just... It, it motivates you. It brings you back to the salon so then you can share with your clients what you've learned and, and just seeing what's new and, um, and fresh out there. Absolutely. And so. even if you don't end up doing maybe exactly what they're teaching, I think it brings the, like sort of a level of inspiration that, you know, like you learned this one thing, but you can make it so much bigger and so much different. Mm -hmm. than, you know, Absolutely. Like, so. The hair shows are just like a fashion show. You're going <laughs> to see the wild colors. You're going to see the half-dressed girls and everything, and then you yeah. bring it in to the salon and say, hey, you know what, I can do the same type of thing except with tones that will look good on you. You don't have to do the purple and the teal and the <laughs> turquoise. <laughs> so it is. It's awesome, though. It's a lot of fun. You're right. Um, which brings me to one more point, and that's I've seen a lot of color, and even like the pastels and things like that. Um, is that a big thing, or is that kind of fading off? What is your... Yeah. I think it's going to stick around, um, especially this spring mm -hmm. and this summer. Yeah, a lot of it, again, uh, with the ombre look, having the red on the ends with, with some dark hair or purples are huge, and everybody would love to have this blue color. Um, blue is very hard to get to stay, but um, it is a, it's a pop. You know, everyone wants to see their hair pop. It doesn't matter if it's a little strip here or the whole entire head, you know, the violets, violets and blondes right now mm -hmm. are very, very in. Um, cool tones. I will say the cool platinum blondes you're oh. going to see this like the summer. Silver? Oh yeah. You're going to okay. see that this summer for sure. Oh, very so, fun. Yeah. All right. So Joy has a question, which okay. I think it would be a lot of fun to talk about. And she wants to know what's the difference between like a balayage color service and highlights. Okay. Balayage, is, it's, it's all technique for a stylist. You can come in and say you want some highlights. Um, we might end up doing a balayage. It is um, the way that we apply the color and it is a technique like the ombre. And it's all on how we decide it's going to look best for you on your end result, whatever you would want. Do you want the color to pop more on the ends, or do you want it up around your scalp and kind of coming down? Some people can't stand that color that's growing out and looks like you haven't had it colored. So 
Um, that's kind of uh, the explanation I can I can give you. It, it's um, technique weaving. Weaving is every other one. Balayage it can be every other one. It depends on how heavy you want it to be. Um, but again, it's more on the end. So. Ah, very good. Okay. Sort of the beauty tip of the day. I there you that. go. There you go. <laughs> so, Thanks for chatting with me. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. All right, so where can we find you? Where are you located and social media? All right, so um, I am on, there is Salon 122 Facebook. We have um, a website, and we are in Marysville, Ohio, and we are right uh, located in the downtown square. It's 20, 30 minutes from uh, Columbus. We have a lot of people that come from Hilliard in Dublin. It's 33 right there. It's very easy to get to. And um, I also am on Facebook, too, Kim Fox. So you can find me there or on Instagram. I think I'm under Kimberly S. Ohio. My kids, I have two children. And, um, yeah. So, Aww, very exciting. cool. Yeah, we are pretty close, I would say, to Columbus. And... And it's the perfect commute. You can listen to our podcast on the way out. All so, right. <laughs> All right. So uh, you can find me, Shannon Good, at shannongood.com. You can find me on Facebook and Pinterest at Shannon Good or Good Hair Award winning on site hairstyling specialist. I'm going to change that. Make it a little <laughs> easier. <laughs> it sounds good to remember at the time. <laughs> and then Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at Running Hair Girl. Google Plus at Shannon Good, and you can find us at the Columbus Agency on Facebook and dot com. And if you'll just take a minute to leave a review for us on iTunes, it'll help others to find us. Thank you so much.